my humble homestead and garden side chat so today I am gonna try to clean off <laughs> some of this food that I picked up in Fargo and I have my jars washing and getting hot in my dishwasher so I can process these carrots I'm gonna can them with my pressure canner I have some soup going in here and if all goes well, I'm going to pressure can some of that soup and then have some for this week. And since I'm going to be using my canner today, also what I'm going to do, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it today or maybe do it tomorrow. I have those eggs that I got from Deb yesterday. Um, I have a dozen of them. I tried to go to the Arthur uh, market and I met her son. I tried to get some more, but he didn't have any eggs. so. The dozen I'm gonna start with, and then I'm gonna to try to find some more uh, farm fresh eggs that are clean but not washed. I got some pickling lime, so I'm going to water glass those. So I'll probably get to those tomorrow. See, so yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna start. But so for right now, what I'm gonna do is I have all of these onions here, and I'm gonna do some caramelized onions. Now, that was my plan with these all along. I was originally just going to caramelize them slowly in a bunch of butter and make them ooey and gooey like they normally are. But I decided since I'm using my canner already, let's try to dehydrate them. So I found a recipe where I can actually put them in my slow cooker, cook them all day in just some water, and then I can dehydrate them where they get nice and golden and crunchy. And then you can one either snack on them if you want or you can use them in all kinds of recipes and they taste just like your caramelized onions so i'm going to try that with these onions and see how those turn out because i always like having things that i can dehydrate because one they're they're nice and light two they take up way less jars less you know real estate in the jars and such so i'm going to try that and see how that turns out so if these are things that interest you then come along and watch too so i am going to start by chopping up my onions these are the onions that i got at aldi's mine are not ready i didn't see any at the market the last day or two and so i picked up a couple bags I actually picked up three bags and then a bag of red ones uh, the red ones I got for a recipe and then I also put a couple in my soup I'm making split pan split pea and ham soup because I got some more ham hocks and oh and the other thing is too I have some I soaked and rinsed all of the split peas that I had and I had way too many so I'm just gonna can up the rest of my uh, split peas and just have them all canned up so whenever I just wanted to make soup or whatever I'll have a few maybe probably I'm gonna do quarts so I'll probably have like two quarts left over since I'm pressure canning anyway so what I like to do with the onions is I go ahead and I save the ends and the skins and I have a whole bag in my freezer because I also save celery and carrots um, which I'll, I'll add these carrots to this bag too, the ends of the carrots, and I just throw them in a Ziploc freezer bag, and I keep them in my freezer because I use these for my broth, for my bone broths that I make. And this is a good way, because I just wrap it in cheesecloth, and then I just put all the stuff to cook with my bones, and you know, carcasses and things, and then we're using every bit we can. So that's what I do. And then I'm just gonna dice these up. Now you can, with the caramelized onions, you can use a mandolin. I thought about using my mandolin, but you know, I'm gonna work, I'm working a couple hours this evening. Um, for Mary with an eye, she was so gracious and she switched a couple hours with me. 
on what day was that Thursday night would because I thought I had that doctor appointment super early in the morning and then I got there and they're like your appointments next week which I don't still can't fathom why they send appointment reminders a whole week in advance and you know even if they want to do that why don't they send it the day after or you know after your appointment is I don't know just me working on getting organized I guess <laughs> I'm not blaming anyone but myself I had a great day in Fargo but I just I feel really bad because after Mary and I switched ours then I found out that she had an early appointment too and I, I just I'm feeling really bad so I'm gonna put these on high since I well sometimes what I do is I put them on low I do it at night and then I cook them all night but since I want to dehydrate these all night I'm gonna cook them on high until later and then I'm gonna dehydrate them overnight and then we'll see what they look like so yeah so I'm kind of excited to see what these look like these are not quite as potent as the the red ones are the red ones I literally chopped two and I was crying <laughs> And I thought, oh no, I'm not doing another pity party video. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm just chopping onions. And there are some ways, the little tips, if you have to chop a lot of onions and you don't have a chopper, because this is one thing that does help, there are some ways that is helpful. One is you can chew gum, because this, it goes into your mouth and not your eyes. So chewing gum helps absorb some of that. Um, what else? There was something, I think you could have like a lit candle that helps take some of it too. I think this onion is a little, I'm not taking enough of the top layers off it. Yeah, see, just throw that in there. So anyway, so those are a couple different ways. Maybe you guys have some little secrets to chopping onions where you're not crying. Maybe all my talking will help. <laughs> so anyway. But then there were a couple, let's see, we're, I'm going to go over a couple questions while I'm chopping too. I had one person asked what kind of um, containers and things or how long I preserve for. That was one of the big questions I was getting. How long am I preserving for? And for me, one of the, the answers I gave to that was I'm really more into preparedness I'm doing it for myself I live by myself I pay my own bills so my income is a little bit more fixed so I do it more so when I find things on sale that I will buy things that way and preserve them so that's kind of my way of doing it and also for the fact that I want to have things so I don't eat out order out buy convenience foods I that's another reason why I oh yeah I can feel I need why I like to have things that are made for instance yesterday I went to that appointment okay if I start crying it's the onions and I hadn't eaten because you know it was so early and I oh I was gonna go to the market that market right after and I thought oh, I'll just get something there Oh, these onions are really getting in my eyes now, people. Whew, that's they're really making me cry. Anyway, so I was like super hungry and I was like, oh my gosh, it would have been so easy to just stop and eat something, especially because I had this like wood fire pizza there and it, I really was tempted. I wanted to get some, but guess what? I knew I had plenty of food at home that was already prepared and I bought those crackers anyway, which actually weren't really great for me, but I did want to try that cowboy candy. So I didn't. It would have been really easy for me to just hit a drive through pick something up. I literally just came home and I grabbed, I kind of ate a little snack and then I had that cowboy candy, which was great. And then I had some leftovers in my fridge. So. Yeah, so that's really why. I mean, it makes it so much easier to eat well. If you want pizza, there's really easy pizza crust recipes. Um, it's Mexican. There's just all kinds of ways 
to uh, to eat what you crave. So that's kind of what I do. As far as if I'm able to prepare ahead of time, I mean, I guess for me, I would like to have a good year stockpiled up if I can. That That is what I would like to do. I would like to have a good year. I mean, I, I'm not one to run out and grab a whole bunch of water and things like that. If it comes down to us, we can line our bathtubs with liners, fill up tons of water for washing, things like that. We can filtrate it if we had to. I mean, like I said, I don't walk in fear. I look more at preparedness and more of like cost, things like that. I, I wouldn't die from drinking tap water if I had to fill up a, a whole bunch of buckets and things. I mean, I do save buckets for winter, winter sewing. You know, there, there are just ways. There are ways around it. So, uh, yeah, it's more about, for me, it's more about saving money. Um, and just knowing what's going on in our world. I mean, that's one thing that's like super important with the recession and stuff. If you think, oh, gas is down, we're doing great. I mean, think about it. How far did they hike the gas up before they dropped it a little bit? I mean, don't let them fool you. You know, where are we going to put our trust? You know, don't put our trust in the government, for heaven's sake. That's They're definitely not there to help us. I mean, I personally put my trust in God. That's where I put my trust. I'm not going to, you know, that's that's where I believe. But I don't believe in walking in fear. I just believe in being prepared. That's that's what I, how I feel. So, yeah. So as far as preparing how much food, you know, I guess that would be more of an individual. You know, how big is your family? How, you know, my goal for me is mostly having meals. Having meals prepared having instant things prepared. I can make easy meals. Mine a lot has to do with my health. So I like to have things I can throw together because I don't, I know when I was eating processed foods and eating things that were not good for me, I was not healthy. I was not. I'm still trying to get healed. So for me, it's really about my health and then the prices. You know, oh my gosh, the prices in the stores. So, and right now I don't see a break in that. So trying to buy them on sale. And, you know, if we can just stock up, I know it's not always the, we get what we want or the best things, but I did show you my grocery haul. And I would love to get everything from meat vendors. And I would love to get everything from farmers. And, and I try, I mean, the farmers didn't have things that I wanted. But you know what? If I can find things on sale at Aldi, they have great sales and great stuff in Walmart and Amazon. And, you know, I will because it's about getting good quality and about saving money and about using what I need. And don't go buying stuff you, you guys aren't going to like. I mean, that's silly, you know. Just, you know, get, get what's on sale, get what's in season. Find a way that you can preserve it. That's just my suggestion. So that was a long roundabout way to answer that question. So I hope that was helpful. And I'm just gonna continue with these onions. I'm gonna cook them in my cooker here. And I'm gonna cook them for you know quite a few, few hours. They're not gonna get dark and caramely like they would with the butter, but they're gonna get nice and translucent and a little bit brown. I will show you what they look like before I put them on the dehydrator tray, okay? So that's what I'm doing right now, waiting for my dishwasher to get done here with my jars. And then I've got this whole bag of carrots here that I, this whole little bag of carrots here <laughs> that I am going to process up. That was just a funny one she put on top. She's like, do you want it? I'm like, yeah, I'll eat that one. I don't care. So no waste. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I will get those cut up and they look good. So honestly, I don't even think I'm gonna peel them. I think I'm just gonna throw them in a sink and wash them in vinegar. And I'm just gonna have decided if I'm gonna chop those this way or use my mandolin. I'm probably gonna chop them because it's this chopper is the easiest thing, you guys. 
look for that uh, free giveaway and watch that video. Do some kindness. Win a chopper. I love it. So, yeah, I'll link that below, too. All right, we will see you in a little bit, guys. I'll be back, and, and we'll get these onions processing in the dehydrator. All right, see you soon. Hi, welcome to the Every Bit Counts Challenge continuation. And thank you for watching Trina's Humble Homestead and Garden Side Chat. So I am going to work on these carrots. I have my onions chopped and in the slow cooker. And I have a bunch of carrots in my sink with some water and a little bit of vinegar. And I am just decided I'm gonna chop up these carrots here. Then I will go ahead, my dishwasher just got done. So the um, jars are still heating in there. So I thought it would be a perfect time to get the carrots chopped up so I can get them jarred up. I got some water boiling on the stove. So we'll put some hot jars, some carrots in there with some hot water. And then I have in my Presto pressure canner, I have some water starting to heat. So we'll do hot jars, hot water in a hot canner. All right, I will show you after I get these all chopped up. And I just wanna show you, look at how thick this carrot is, okay? So I'm gonna put it in my handy dandy chopper. And all I do is okay, chop it right down and it goes like that. So if y'all haven't looked at the free giveaway, Go ahead, check it out so you can win one of these choppers. It's awesome. It saves my arm. I don't know if you all know, but I have plates in my arm. So it gets hard for me to chop. And this is an awesome way. I know some of you have a food processor and that is great. I have a mandolin and this. And sometimes you just don't want to drain out the food processor. I don't know if you see how thick these carrots are. Um, and this is just super simple dishwasher safe. And it chops them. It does have ex different chopper blade sizes too. So you can do different ones and put them in there. I tend to just really like this, this one. So yeah, go ahead, check that out. Do a round of back of kindness. Get an entry to win this, this uh, chopper. All right, thanks so much. See you soon when I get these processed. Welcome back, friends. So I have these carrots processed. I started putting them into my warm jars. So what I'm just doing, honestly, is I'm just taking my hands, which are clean, by the way. Always make sure everything's clean when you're canning. We have disinfected jars from the dishwasher. And I just go up to kind of right about the bottom line. Some of these I might have to just push down a little bit, which they'll push down. But right about where the bottom line is is kind of where I'm doing this. You now some of these jars I got, so I got some pint jars at jars at Walmart, but there was when I was at Fleet Farm I've gotten a package of these jars that I'm not sure about the name. So we're gonna try them and see how they work. So I thought the chopping them turned out great. I think they'll be perfect for soups, even if you just want to have a can of carrots in the winter, I think they'll be perfect. And I'm doing pints so I can do two levels in my pressure canner. And plus it's just me once again, so pints are perfect for me. I think it is awesome. And then I got this bag of the carrot tops and bottoms that I just will use for my bone broth that I make with my bits and carcasses or whatever. So yeah, so I'll use that and then I have some more back in my chopper here that I'll fill up. I'm so happy to get these done. This every bit counts challenge is really helpful because it kind of makes sure you do do something every day and even if it's just a little bit, it counts. Every bit counts. So it is adding up. I just saw a gear go flying. And then... I oh my goodness so I made in the um, leftover how many meals do you can make with leftover roast and such I made I don't know if I have enough for a whole nother jar here Let's see if I can put a few extra in there otherwise I'll just throw these in my roast as well or maybe I'll just munch on them so I I made that meat pie 
beautiful, you guys. It was so good. So I don't even think I saved the second one in the freezer. I might. So I'm going to make that again with my leftover roast. So I'm going to make some potatoes and carrots, celery in there. I think I might even put a cabbage in there. I mean, to me, I, in everything, I always say the more vegetables you have, the better. Oh, my. This is me being messy. Let me see if I can get. Let's see if I can get them. Let's see. Oh my goodness, maybe I can here. All right, let's take these few bits that I got out of the other jars and get a full jar again. Hey guys, so I just had to really quick show you these um these dehydrated. Here, here how crispy they are. Dehydrated caramelized onions. I just took them out. I had it, my neighbor came over and I had her try them and they were still a little soft. So I put them back in the dehydrator for a little more time and they're super crispy. They almost taste, I mean, they're so good. I can just munch on them. She has me chewing like a little snack. But I'm going to put them in a jar and keep them for like recipes that I used caramelized onions in. Oh my gosh, so good. I think I'm going to do some more of these. These are so good, but I just wanted to show you those. So thanks so much for watching, you guys. Be blessed and have a great day. Bye.